In the past, I published a video about this weave effect. It was a bit difficult to follow along. Time to revisit the effect and hopefully have a more easy to follow video. Let's kick off by creating a new document by pressing Command or Ctrl N. We're going to start by creating horizontal bars. So the first step is to create bars on the horizontal axis. I call them horizontal bars, but this is strictly not correct. The end result will be vertical bars. Anyway, to create the bars along the horizontal axis, we start by creating the gap first. So I'll create a small box on the top left corner. For the actual bar, I will duplicate the small box and move the duplicate next to the original. Then I'll resize it to make it the same height as the document. For the width of the bar, a good ratio is 2.5 times the width of the gap box. Now that we have our building blocks, we can duplicate and position the bars along the horizontal axis. I'll make sure we have a gap after the last bar. Let's select everything in the layers panel and group them. I can now resize the group to fit the document canvas. I don't need the gap boxes anymore, so I'll select them and remove them from the group. Let's name the group before moving on. I'll name it horizontal as the bars are horizontally distributed. Now we need vertically distributed bars which we can easily create by duplicating the horizontal group and then rotating it with 90 degrees. Make sure to resize it to fit your canvas. As I'm using a square canvas, this is not needed. Let's name the group vertical. Excellent, we have our bars. To get the weave effect, we are also going to need two checkerboard patterns, an odd and an even checkerboard. I'll explain in a minute why I call them like this. We can manually draw the checkerboard boxes, but I can also utilize the bar groups we created. I'll duplicate both of them, and while the duplicates are selected, I can use the intersect function from the layer geometry menu. When I hide the bar groups, we can see the result of the intersect. For the odd checkerboard, we're going to keep the odd blocks from the first row. Because the intersect created one curve, I can use the node tool and select the nodes of the boxes I don't need. Even though this is doable, I personally like to have the boxes as separate curves. To do that, I can right click and from the geometry menu, select separate curves. Now each box has its own curve. This way, instead of using the node tool to select the nodes, I can just use the select tool to select them. And by holding the shift key, I can keep selecting the boxes which I need to remove. Beautiful, our old checkerboard pattern is ready. I'll select all the boxes and group them. Let's not forget to give it a name and hide it for the time being. I can repeat the same steps, but this time, instead of keeping the odd boxes in the first row, I will keep the even boxes and remove the odd boxes. Once that is done, let's group the boxes and name it Even Checkboard. When I turn on the on checkerboard, we should get back the whole pattern. There's one more thing we need to do with the checkerboard pattern boxes. This is optional, but I notice by doing the next step makes the weave effect smoother. For the odd checkerboard boxes, we need to make them a little bit wider on the left and the right. To do that, I'll ungroup the odd layer, turn on the option Transform Objects Separately, after which the first box will only be selected. I can now make this wider on both sides, and as you notice, all the other boxes are getting resized in the same manner. Let's press Command or Ctrl G to group them back and restore the layer name. When I turn on the horizontally distributed bars, notice how these checkerboard boxes are a bit wider than the bars. This will make sure that there will be some overlap with the vertical bars in the weave effect. I'm going to repeat the same steps for the even checkerboard pattern. Ungroup them and make sure the transform object separately is turned on while making the boxes a bit wider on the top and the bottom. Let's group them back and restore the layer name. 
When we enable the vertically distributed bars, the checkerboard boxes should be slightly wider than the bars. After these two optional steps, we are ready to have some fun. Let's turn off the bar and the patterns before moving on. Instead of using an actual image, I'll create a rectangle which will act as the image container. I'll move this to the bottom of the layer stack and make three duplicates. At the end, I will have four image containers. Let's name the image layers 1, 2, 3 and 4. Excellent! To create the weave effect, pay close attention because this is what we need to do. Move the even pattern as a mask to image 4. Remember, to have a layer act as a mask, you need to drag and drop it on the layer icon. Next, the odd pattern as a mask to image 3. The vertical as a mask to image 2. And finally, the horizontally aligned bars as a mask to image 1. Let's quickly turn on the masks. And if you did everything correctly, you will see something like this where the gaps are showing true. We're almost done. Now we need to move image 4 as a child into image 2. To make the layer a child of another layer, you need to drag and drop it on the layer name. This way it becomes a child. As mentioned earlier, if we drop it on the icon, it will become a mask. So let's make sure to drop image 4 on the title of image 2. And image 3 will need to become a child of image 1. It looks like nothing has changed and that is correct. If your image changed, then you probably missed a step somewhere. To get the actual weave effect, we need shadows. Let's select image 4 and go to the effects panel and enable the outer glow. Click on the cog icon to open up the effects dialog so we can modify the properties of the outer glow effect. As we need a shadow, we're going to change the blend mode to multiply and change the color to black. We can now adjust the radius and the intensity to our liking. Let's close the dialog and while image 4 is still selected, I'll copy this layer. I can now select image layer 3 and use the paste effects option from the edit menu to paste the same outer glow settings. And that is how you create the weave effect. If you want to use an image, let me quickly show you how to achieve that with this setup. I'll paste an image on top of the layer stack and make one extra copy of it. I'll move the first image as a child to image container 2. So this means drag and drop it on the name of the layer. The second should be then moved as a child into image container 1. We now need to make sure that both of the images are below the checkerboard patterns. Moving the layers inside the layer can be tricky, but we can use the arrange move back one menu item to move the images below the pattern layers. As a final step, we need one more copy of the image and move this inside the image 4 container as a child. Our image is now interweaved. Pretty cool. For most images you probably will need a dark or black background. Let me quickly do that by adding a black fill layer and moving this layer to the bottom of the layer stack so that it acts as a background color. Here are some extra tricks for you. You can change the opacity of the image in the image container too. This will color your horizontal bars with the color of the image container too. Or setting the blend mode to multiply can also create a nice effect. You can then play around by changing the color of the image to container. Check out my original video for more adjustment tricks you can apply to the weave effect. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Smash the like and subscribe buttons before leaving and see you in the next video.